Hi, everybody. Jen Hatmaker here, your host of the For the Love podcast. Welcome to the show. I This is my kind of series, I think, because not only is it so usable for me, I know it's usable for you. And so I, I have, I'm just like, fascinated with every conversation we have in this series. We are, we are in a whole repertoire called for the love of calming the chaos. And I know, because I'm always listening to you, that you, like me, just, there's this common sense right now of being just overwhelmed, kind of an overwhelmed feeling every day. And Sometimes even the sense that chaos has replaced any kind of normal flow of life. And, and we are on the receiving end of it. Like things are just happening to us and around us, right? And we're tossed to and fro by whatever keeps happening. And we're too tired to figure out how we even got here in the first place. But sometimes we cause our own overwhelm for a million reasons. I mean, we try to do it all ourselves or we procrastinate and things pile up, um, causing us way more problems if we'd have just tackled it in the moment. That's one of my um, key flaws. Um, but sometimes we're in chaos and we don't know why. We can't really pinpoint it. We can't find the source. We keep making maybe decisions that don't serve us and invite more chaos into our life. Maybe it's through the kind of relationships we invite in or are already in, or maybe we're self-medicating with the just poison of our choice um, or shutting down altogether, like unable to function. And we just don't know why we just keep going. Uh, I just can't, I cannot pull this thread straight. Um, so we have a friend here today, a friend of the show for this episode um, to kind of walk us through some of these ideas, um, particularly by helping us look at how we might have come to the patterns, the responses, the behaviors that we currently exhibit through our family structures that we grew up in. So returning to the show is Nedra Tawab. And I just, I love her. Nedra is a licensed therapist. She is the, the queen in my heart of the most Practical, actionable advice you can you can find on the internet these days. Honestly, like seriously, if you don't follow her, it's strange. I often feel like she is reading my daily mail. She's so gifted at distilling the things that we are often collectively feeling, and and then holding our hands and figuring out how to address it. Please do follow her on Instagram, and I will put the link up. It's gold. Um, Nedra is the author of the. New York Times bestselling book, Set Boundaries, Find Peace, which we talked about the first time she was on the show. And now she's written a book that addresses the very topic we want to cover today. And it's called, get excited, Drama Free, A Guide to Managing Unhealthy Family Relationships. So Nedra is helping us sort of peel back the curtain here on our earliest relationships with our family of origin um, and how this often sets the tone for how we navigate life um, for better or for worse, right? And she is so good at identifying not just where the problem begins, but what to do with it, right? She tackles what dysfunctional families look and feel like and then what we're all here for, how to break free. She's done a ton of work around boundaries, uh, which are required toward calming the chaos in our lives required. And so we're going to talk to her about what does this look like practically? Um, where does the buck stop? What do we do with the discomfort? Um, what do boundaries look like? Are there levels of boundaries? That's all in this, this all in here today, you guys, and realize we actually have agency here. We do. And so, I, as always, when I walk away from a conversation with Nedra, I just feel like centered and grounded. Um, she is this calming presence of wisdom and instruction. And we're so lucky to have her back on the show today. So you guys welcome back with me, the absolutely wonderful Dr. Nedra Tawab. Nedra, welcome back to the show. I... When I 
when somebody pushes me like into a corner and says, I'm forcing you to tell me some of your favorite podcast guests, which I get that question all the time. Um, your name is always up there. Yeah. Um, so you've been on the show before and, and really, I feel like what you've brought into my life since then is just so rich. Cause I started, I'm following you and I see your stuff out every day. And I'm just telling you that a lot of the words that you put out onto the internet land in people's lives on the day that they need it. And it matters. And I'm one of them. And so I'm so happy to have you back. Why? Thank you for that. I'm happy that whatever I'm going through in life or seeing others go through that inspires whatever comes up in my mind is, is so helpful to other people. Wow. It is. And it's also the way that you do it. Like particularly on socials, you are giving uh, like mental wellness and relational wellness and life wellness is just so big. It's just so big. And we have, there's so many factors. And so you have this gift of giving us digestible bite-sized pieces. You just break off a little chunk and you're like, this is the only one I'm going to talk about. Just let's look at this little piece of the whole. And all of a sudden it feels a little bit less overwhelming. I would love to hear, particularly in your relationship with your social media following and the way that you use that medium in your area of expertise, how this, how did you get started um, pulling this wisdom into, into simple and digestible steps that the rest of us can take. And then I'd love to also hear what was it like when people really started responding because they do and they have. Ah, um, you know, I would say in being a therapist, we don't get to talk as much as we get to think while mm. clients mm. are talking and so a lot of my thoughts are like, OK, so what should you say to someone who's being passive aggressive to you? Mm. How do you respond when you're really having a hard day? Like mm. I'm sitting with people and I'm not always saying it, but I'm certainly thinking of it. Like what is mm. the healthiest way to tell someone, hey, I don't want to come to your birthday party mm. because these are the things that I'm constantly talking about, it makes it a little bit easier for mm. me to, you know, maybe write a listicle or write a paragraph because I see people who are struggling with, you know, maybe going home for the holidays, yeah. getting over a breakup, all mm -hmm. of these things. And you're like, you know, I, I've heard this five times today. Mm. So I'm thinking yeah. that my clients aren't unique. Yeah. And that as That's humans, right. mm. we need tools to be able to say no, to be mm. able to step outside of our comfort zone, mm. to be able to have hard conversations. Yeah. Um, and so that is the inspiration for a lot of content, I would say. Mm. Um, also, TV. I watch a lot of TV and I'm, I want to talk back to the characters and I can't. <laughs> I do better. <laughs> do better. And here's how. Yeah. And so when I'm watching that, uh -huh. I'm able to like, you mm. know, I, I might journal a little bit after like, mm. you know, instead of cussing someone out or yeah. yelling or, you know, doing all of these things when we get upset, what can we do? That's good. What can we do to mm -hmm. let someone know that they hurt us? Because that's mm -hmm. why you're responding that way. You're yeah. really mad and upset. But the only tool that you think mm. you have is to cuss, to yell, to hit, to sure. scream. Um, and just my life, you know, I experience stuff and I'm, you know, in relationships with people mm -hmm. and people annoy me sure. and I'm sure I annoy people and mm -hmm. people say hard things to me and being mm -hmm. able to express my experiences. So I would say that human being a human is a lot of content in and of itself. Mm. <laughs> Golly, that's the thesis statement right there. It just is. Yeah. I, I, I say this to my community all the time. I'm like, life is hard and it's not because we're all doing it wrong. It's just because it is. Yeah. I, I just, that's the cost of a human life. We all get it. We all pay it. We all yeah. pay the tax. And so these tools to put into play as we go, where they really do round out some of the hardest edges 
that you, that you help us work through how, and, um, and it's been wondrous to just watch your community just grow and develop and to see the impact you're having in the comment feed. And so I'm curious what it's been like for you because you are operating two very different modes with similar content, but one is quiet, private, tucked away little room. And one is like, Hey world, everybody come in. Um, has that, do you ever struggle between the two sort of energies or do you find that kind of a seamless way to be a leader? I am learning how to manage both. Hmm. It is a really new space. And I think most humans like attention to some extent, right? Like we Hmm. want to be noticed. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. And I am getting that. Yes, you are. Um, But there are times where I also want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I am figuring out what the balance of that looks like. Mm -hmm. For me, it is responding when I want to, not when people are making a request. Because if I responded in that way, I wouldn't have time for my children. I wouldn't have time for myself. I wouldn't have time to be with my husband or friends or family members, it would be all day. Yep. And so just like we set the boundary, you know, in therapy of saying, you know, this session is an hour, perhaps on social media, Mm, I need to have a similar boundary Mm. where I'm not engaging all day um, and in ways that, you know, I don't necessarily see the value in. I see more value and helping the masses, not necessarily helping people one-on-one in that space. Good. Yep. So sometimes people will say, hey, here is my particular issue. Mm-hmm. What do you think? And I, I think you should talk to a therapist. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Your issue is so unique. Mm. I don't even know how I could turn that into consumable content because I would like it to be something that would help multiple people, not anyone with your particular yeah. story that probably needs to be worked through with a professional. So finding that balance between how much of myself to give. Yeah. Because it is possible, especially when you love your job. I saw something that said, when you love your job, you'll work all day. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the opposite uh, that's great <laughs> I really love my job I do yeah, you sure. know even when I'm watching tv I'm a therapist watching tv right yeah. so I'm like yeah, yeah. oh my gosh so her dad <laughs> was the reason that's right you know so I, I, you know it's yeah. in me it's on me it comes sure. out of me Right. Yeah. You know, I, the way I treat my kids, I think, oh, my gosh, I want my kids mm-hmm. to like me when they grow up. That's right. So a lot of my motivation for how I parent is wanting to be liked. Sure. Of course. I mean, you are <laughs> you are talking years. to an Enneagram three. You are. That's my bread and butter yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. I want to be liked in 20 years. I think it says yeah. something when your kids want to talk to you, when they want to be around mm. you. Versus when they have to good. zero through 18, you know, That's what do right. they do at 19? What do they do at 25? Mm. Well, we know what's possible and we know how mm. to get there. So, you know, I, I think there are, there are things that are in us, right? Like, and that's a part of it that I get that I have this energy. Sometimes people love mm. to tell me stuff and in the white yeah. space, I'm like, you know what? This is a barbecue, but I have time. Go ahead. Finish this story. Sure. <laughs> you know, I'm sure. I, I get it. But, yeah. you know, and then there yeah, are yeah. other times where yeah. I have to place the boundary and say, you of know course. what? I'm going to go over here and get my plate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. fix my plate. Um, I'll right. see you later. That's right. And so it's it's really dependent on the yeah. day, on the situation, yeah. Um how much Mm -hmm. I want to give. This is a really good segue because the last time you were on the show, you had just released set boundaries, find peace. And so a lot of us um, onboarded into your space around the boundaries conversation. Today we're talking about your new book and it's called, I don't know anybody who doesn't need this. Not a single person. It's called drama free a guide to managing unhealthy family relationships. And so we're talking about family here. We, I mean, you're talking about it from the driver's seat, how you want your kids to feel in 20 years, but all of us were once the kid 
in the family dynamic. And so we couldn't wait to have you on the show to talk this through, but we're in the middle of a series called calming the chaos. And there there's no equation where family dynamics do not play into this. And so I would love to hear you just start here. Can you talk about the importance really of identifying dysfunctional family patterns in the interest um, of, of understanding how we are currently operating and why we are struggling to make healthy and good choices um, to sort of create the life we want. It's a huge question. Start wherever you want and we'll sort of drill down from there. You know, this morning I was thinking about love and I was thinking about what we do in the name of love. Hmm. Um, Often we will listen to people who don't, know what they're talking about. I've heard of people saying, well, my dad told me I should buy the house and their dad is in debt. Their dad is, you know, sure. it's like, he's not a money manager, <laughs> but yeah. because you love him, mm-hmm. you listen to this person, right? So sometimes we listen unwisely. Sometimes we accept things that in any other relationship we would, we would be like, well, this is, this is wild. This is inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes we, ignore the way that people make us feel. There are times where we tolerate, you know, um, mean behaviors. There Mm. are times where we cover up secrets that should be told. Mm. I feel like um, I just finished watching this series, uh, Snowfall, Mm. and the mother engaged in some illegal behavior with her son because she loved him, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, and we've seen that on multiple TV shows, you know, not just Snowfall, but it's it's a thing that we do. Like, oh, my mm-hmm. gosh, you did this thing. I have to help you cover it up. Yeah. Um, so there are just so many things that we do in the name of love. And I think with dysfunctional families, we are in them because we love these people mm-hmm. and we don't necessarily um Mm. know how to shift those relationships because shifting them sometimes feels unloving. Yes. It could feel unloving to say, you know what? I'm not going to come to that because you're going to be drunk. Mm. You know, I, I don't want you to come over here and watch my kids because you don't listen to any of my rules. Mm. That, that can feel really unloving, right? Sure. Like, I mean, those are things that might need to happen. And it also makes you feel really guilty, really bad. Yes. Um, and so most of us will just complain about it. We'll just be like, That's oh, right. my gosh, every time my parents come over, they just they let the kids watch rated R movies and eat candy and they broke my vase. And it's just like that's something I have to tolerate to be in this relationship with my mm. parents and let them watch their grandkids. It's like, you know, there I hear a lot of choices mm. in all of that. Which ones are you willing to exercise so you're not having to Mm. worry about the health and safety of your kids or you're not having to deprogram them or, you know, like Mm. there's so many things we can do, but our choices are limited when we just focus on the only thing I can do is love them. And this is the way that they're saying I need to do it. I love this time of year in Texas. We have like two seconds of nice weather before the summer ridiculousness sets in. And if I'm at home, I am always on my porch and walking around barefoot in the grass. I just don't love wearing shoes if I don't have to. However, when I do have to actually put on shoes, you better believe I want them as comfortable as possible, especially when I'm walking a lot or running errands and definitely when I'm traveling. That's where Rothy's comes in, as always. I discovered their slip-on sneakers literally years ago and never looked back. And fun fact, they're super durable. I throw them in the wash and they are as good as new. Um, But Rothy's has a ton of amazing styles, uh, including a brand new almond loafer that is so chic along with, of course, their iconic ballet flats. And they have a vibrant new spring slash summer palette of hues and patterns that's darling. And the thing with Rothy's is that all of their styles look 
effortlessly cute, but they don't sacrifice on comfort. I seriously love this brand. Plus, everything at Rothy's is sustainably made with their signature thread spun from, you got it, single-use plastic bottles. Over 158 million and counting. Incredible. So for stylish and comfortable and sustainable shoes, shop Rothy's. Get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash for the love. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash for the love. Most of us eat garbanzo beans or chickpeas, if you will, in our salads or obviously our hummus. Heck, I have a whole dip dinner with hummus as the hero ingredient in my cookbook. But what you might not know is that these little round legumes are actually one of the world's best ingredients for improving gut health and tackling malnutrition. So from our mental health to our immune system, the garbanzo bean could be the key to living a healthy life. Pretty cool, right? Y'all, this is just one of the many important and fascinating and impactful topics we're covering in the Make Me Care About podcast. I am beyond delighted to be guest hosting this all new podcast with really the smartest superstars in their respective fields. In every single episode, we're bringing awareness and attention to life-changing work and innovative solutions. And just like garbanzo beans, I can pretty much guarantee it won't necessarily be anything you expect. We'll chat about stuff like ninth grade and digital money and iodized salt and your kids' friend circles and poop and so much more. You're going to walk away knowing more and definitely caring more in all the best ways. And you might end up feeling a bit more hopeful too. That's what we're here for. So listen in and subscribe to Make Me Care About wherever you get your podcasts. Is there value in um, rolling the reel back to when we were kids in the home and the dynamics we grew up with, examine them from an adult perspective to look back and go, uh, I see this pattern and I kind of see how it, where, and why it might've formed when I was just little, um, or how my parents dealt with conflict or how my mom spoke to me or whatever the thing is like, is it valuable, um, to go back that far and try to sort of excavate some of the roots and the origins of our family dynamics and the way that even we respond to one another. It could certainly be helpful to understand your origin story or your connection to responding in a certain way. Um, I think there are people who will say, well, I do this because of that. I think adulthood Mm. is really interesting Mm. because you have this opportunity to to grow up and be your own person. But so many of us are still very much our parents' child. Yes. Not, and I mean child in a little sense, our Uh little child where they are still very much ruling what we're able to do. And if not Mm. completely, at least when they're with us. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that there has to be a ver- version of parenting where parents allow their children to go up, grow up and make decisions. And what I find is people aren't making terrible decisions and, you know, like off on drugs or doing these wild things. Yeah. It's like they want to go to Jamaica for the holidays. Mm. And that is the biggest friction in their family. Mm. Like. So you want to go to Jamaica. Your parents are saying you're a horrible person. Mm. (laughs) You're a terrible person because you want to be somewhere warm Mm. for the holiday. Oh, my gosh. You are just awful. You're a terrible person because you don't want to plan the family vacation that Mm. you plan every year. Yeah. So it's it's just really interesting, the manipulation that takes place and our adult family relationships because people want you to be a certain thing or a certain Mm. way. And so manipulation is used to get you to conform. Yeah. Well, and it's um, effective. Uh, I mean, because back to your original point, we love these people and want to be loved by them. And so these are behaviors typically that have always been rewarded. 
right? Like in, in any given family, when we do the thing that yeah. we're expected to do, that we've come to be known for, that everybody else wants us to do, well, we get what we want out of that, which is this sort of affection or approval or whatever you want to say. Someone was asking me last week, is it okay to tell your kids that you're annoyed? Yes. Mm. Yes, it's okay to, we're teaching them how to communicate their feelings. That's good. Because it's, it's not just that I'm annoyed in this moment. It's that yeah. they're also annoyed by things. And instead sure. of pushing people and hitting them, sometimes naming that emotion is enough. Mm. So you can model that and say, hey, I'm annoyed. I need to take a time out. I'm gonna go sit. I like to sit in my closet. I'm gonna go sit in my closet <laughs> yeah. for 10 minutes. Yeah. Please do not bother me. Mm. And we often think that, oh my gosh, telling your kids that you annoy it, they annoy you. You have to normalize a lot of feelings. Mm -hmm. In relationships, we make each other mad. It's mm. not that I'm always making you happy with everything I do. You're annoyed by me. That's good. You're, you're angry with me sometimes. And yeah. I have to be able to to withstand that, to tolerate it. Yeah. And so that's something that I need to teach you to do. And that's the same for our parents, our siblings, our cousins, mm -hmm. our grandparents. I have to tolerate being bothered by you. And here I am trying to protect you from anything that I could ever cause you. That's good. I don't want you to ever be upset, but you yeah. upset me a lot. That's right. It doesn't even make sense make any sense yeah. to be worried about doing something that is inevitable anyway, because That's right. even if you're trying to please them all the time, you're probably still doing something that they don't always want. So sure. let's just be clear mm -hmm. and say, this is the thing. This mm -hmm. isn't the thing. This is where I need support. This is not where I need support. Mm -hmm. It can be really helpful. I think with our friendships, we do such a good job in mm. our friendships, because we just feel the freedom of being mm. able to be ourselves and yeah. being accepted in that because we met them as ourselves. I see. With, with family, we've been molded to be mm. a certain type of thing. Yeah. You know, it, there's nothing like people in your family telling you, you've always been so nice. It's like, well, I want to be me. A lot of that totally. is just molding, molding, yeah. molding. You're so quiet. What happens when you start to speak up? Oh, yeah. you used to be so quiet. It's like, oh my gosh, you can't be anything but one way. Yeah. It's true. Oh gosh. That sort of, um, caricature that our families know of us, even want of us. And frankly, we voluntarily revert to sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's just easier to be that character, that character in the family, um, rather than be a nuanced person who has grown and evolved. And sometimes we're just contributors to yeah. this. And so I'm, I'd like to hear you talk a little bit to me when I think about dysfunctional family patterns and ways of relating to our family members that are are ranging from hard to traumatic, right? I'd like to talk about the range a little bit because there's different levels of dysfunction here and some of them are low level and they are really and truly manageable with good boundaries and good communication. I think sometimes we just think, oh, no, 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 my, my mom would never change. Well, maybe she would, right? Like we've never really applied clear communication without the edge of passive aggression or, you know, negative by maybe she can, I don't know, but I think there's this, like, there's some low level, lower level behaviors that I would just put in the like frustrating, annoying category. And then there's some dysfunction that's all the way to dangerous, right? Like really damaging to our hearts and our souls and our minds and our psyches, even our families. And so, um, I'd like to hear you discuss a little bit about where we find some thresholds and what happens when we're above a threshold and we just say, this is unacceptable 
And, and I will apply all these tools of communication and boundaries, but this isn't changing. This is, it doesn't move this at all. Yeah. I I think there is a range of this is uncomfortable. This is annoying. This is frustrating. And then this is dangerous. Yeah. Um, This is really, really unhealthy. Mm -hmm. I would say the thing that people might find annoying is, you know, the uncle who makes an inappropriate compliment Mm -hmm. or not Mm -hmm. compliment, but an inappropriate statement here and Mm -hmm. there. Right. It's like, Mm -hmm. well, every two years he'll say something that's inappropriate. Is that manageable? I guess it depends on how far he goes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Can you can you let him know? Um, I, I mean, I just I I just mentioned to a family member who used a word that we should not call people anymore. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's not OK to say that. And they say, yeah, I've heard that. And I say, mm. yeah, don't say it around me. Like, yeah. If you refuse to comply in general, that's your business. You yeah. know, say that at home in the mirror or something. But mm. around me is really inappropriate and you're doing it to be offensive. Mm. Mm, that's good. So uh, I think sometimes even having that conversation with a person and whenever it happens, correcting that and letting them know, hey, you're doing that yes. thing again that we talked about. I I cannot listen to you say that mm. thing about people or use that particular term. It is offensive to mm. me. That's good. Um, Because we do have those family members who will, you know, who will say things, who will make jokes, sure. who do all of these things that are wildly inappropriate. Of course. Um, I I think some other things is maybe some teasing, you know, Mm. maybe there's teasing in your family. It's not, you know, it's not harmful. They're not Mm -hmm. trying to be me, but it's just like, you're tired of it. Right. That's a conversation to be had. Sometimes people borrowing money or, you know, you loan them certain things and they don't return it as they said they would or in the time that they said they would. Those, again, are conversations to have. Yeah. On the other end of the spectrum. I speak with a lot of people who are children of addicts Uh um, and their parents aren't necessarily clean. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes their parents are clean, but they really haven't made amends. They're not um, speaking to um, what happened in their life. And so that may be a situation where the person is like, you know, my parent is actively, you know, in their addiction. And this is really hard to deal with. Or my Mm -hmm. sibling is actively in their addiction. And I hear my my mom or my dad talking about it. It makes me feel this way towards my sibling because I see how stressful it is. Um, I think those are situations that you may want to figure out, is there even a boundary you can place? Mm. You know, is there a conversation that you can have that will really remedy that situation? Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I I think sometimes there are instances of extreme bullying in families. You have some people who are tormented Mm -hmm. by their siblings, by their cousins, by their parents. And having to maybe continuously deal with being called a name or tease. Mm. And those are situations where, again, you have to decide, is there a boundary you can place with a person who really wants to harm you in that way? Mm. Potentially, um, will they respect the boundary? Because you can place a boundary, but will they even listen to you? Like, hey, guys, stop teasing me. Like, will they listen to that? Um, is there a possibility that you can, you know, step back from the relationship and speak infrequently? Maybe, you know, I think family dysfunction is so interesting because we all have a different capacity to tolerate dysfunctional things. Mm -hmm. There are some people who have no issues with a parent being an addict. They have no Mm. issues with, Um, You know, they may see it as this is just how this person is. Yeah. And then there are other people are like, I cannot tolerate this. Yes, that's true. (laughs) You know, there there are some people who will say, you know, my my brother never pays me back and they'll keep giving the brother money. And there are other people like, you know, he was late twice. That's it for him. Yeah. So it really depends on our personalities, what Mm. we value in relationships. Yeah, because sometimes I'll see it where 
especially with adult children, they'll try to tell their parents how to exist in relationships with their siblings. Mom, don't listen Mm. to him. He's using you. And the mom is like, yeah, he's my child. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So they're not in in the place that you're in with your brother. They're not in the place that you're in with Mm. your sister and your other siblings might not be. And so even that causes some dysfunction because- That's a great point. Everybody is in this different place. And it's like, Mm. the only way for us to exist is for everybody to see the same problem I see. Well, everybody doesn't want to. Now you can decide what relationship you want with this problematic person, but Mm. they don't have to agree with you because they don't, they may not have the same problem. Their value may be heavier in just having the relationship with this person where Mm. your value might be being treated a certain way. And Mm. so it's hard for us to say, you know what? My values trumps everybody else's values. And my values Mm. should be the, values you also hold in your relationships. Hmm. That's really good. Uh, There isn't a one size fits all here. You're so right. And it is my instinct to look at any given scenario and say, I can see where the dysfunction starts and where it should be cut off and, and just think that's the right solution. But you're so right. Somebody else may have a different experience of that. So really we're left with the responsibility of minding our own damn business, meaning it's your business. Like it's my threshold. It's my tolerance. Um, that therefore it's mine to hold. It's mine to, to sort of work into. I want to read something that you said, because this to me, I think is where a lot of us will have, will find the resolve to create change based on our tolerance and then hit a real hurdle. This is what you um, wrote recently on Instagram. When you're from a dysfunctional family, healthy boundaries are viewed as threatening, making an observation, expressing an expectation, refusing to be involved in chaos or expressing a different viewpoint will likely lead you to being labeled as mean, funny acting, or weird, not going along with the typical chaos can make it seem like you're trying to make waves in the family. And the truth is you are making waves. You're breaking the disciple of dysfunction. And that isn't always received well by others. To me, this is the moment some, this is a strong deterrent. When we've done the steps to, to create some boundaries and then the response is whatever it is, it would be it aggressive and mean, or f- you get frozen out, whatever the thing is. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just so much here that you've written in that short paragraph. And so this sense that, oh, I am the cause of this drama in my family is really hard to overcome. Um, it, it's like this family gaslighting where all of a sudden you feel like I am the source of the trouble going on in the family um, because of my response here. And so how do we, I don't know if there's a simple answer here, honestly, Netra, but how do we become okay with, with prioritizing our need to break out of the chaos um, in the face of so much disruption? Yeah. Well, in families, there is indoctrination around you must tolerate, tolerate it. Right. There's a lot of um, shaming around having an issue with a family member in your family. Hmm. It's your it's your sister. That's your grandmother. That's, that's your right. mom. That's your dad. You have, mm. you only get one. Blood is thicker than water. Oh man. You shouldn't yeah. have any, you can get over this. You shouldn't. And you know, I, what I think about those things, mm. I think about um, the movie, The Bodyguard. You remember mm. The Bodyguard? Of course. Seen it a hundred times. Oh my gosh. Her sister hired a hitman mm. to have her killed because she was jealous of her sister's career. That's the premise of the movie, right? That's right. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Here she is trying to include, she didn't even know it. Mm 
she's trying to include her sister in her business. She's trying to pull her sister into her life. Meanwhile, she is so jealous of Whitney Houston and her success. Mm. Now, there are people who say, oh, but it's your sister. To the, I mean, to the extent that you are willing to die to mm. stay in the relationship. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that's an extreme example. Sure. But many people have siblings who are jealous. Mm-hmm. There's, I hear so many stories of, I got married, my sister got married. I got a new car, my brother got a new car. My people, parents competing with their kids. Mm-hmm. You know, all, all of these things that happen that you are taught to just tolerate. And these situations in, in some ways become maybe not dangerous physically, but it's dangerous mentally because in actuality, love is not um, someone competing with you and trying to harm you. Mm -hmm. That is not loving. That's right. Love is not someone trying to embarrass you. Mm -hmm. Love is not someone trying to make you think exactly like them or feel exactly how they feel about things. Mm -hmm. That's not loving stuff. And so we really have to disentangle love from dysfunction Mm -hmm. because we often think that because I love these people, I have to accept the dysfunction. And it's like, this is love Mm -hmm. and this is dysfunction. There's a lot of people I love. I love a lot of people. I don't speak to them all the time. Mm -hmm. It is not because I don't love them. Sometimes it's I don't have the time, right? Other times it is, whoa, if I talk to this person, they are going to take so much emotional energy out of me. I'm going to need a 30 day vacation just just to be able to function. Yeah. So we have to decide how much we're willing to give of ourselves to be in certain relationships with people. That's kind of the bottom line. Yeah. That's the bottom line. And no one can make that decision except for us. Yeah. Uh, I I think, yeah. I have seen sometimes where the easy suggestion for a person to improve their life, the easy suggestion would be stop talking to your mom. Mm. It's like, I'm just like, that is your whole problem. That's your whole Mm. problem. I can't say that because it's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. But I'm like, that is the source of all your problems right now. Mm. But. That is the hardest thing to do. That is the hardest thing to conceive. Yeah. To have someone, you know, I I spoke with a woman a few weeks ago who was in her mother's care for a few years, but her mother was physically abusive Mm -hmm. and she was placed in foster care. Now, as an adult, her mother is in her life, but she's still very violent. She has Mm -hmm. some substance abuse issues. And this person was trying to figure out how do I have a relate a healthy relationship with my mom? And I'm like, maybe you don't. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe you don't have a healthy relationship yeah. with her. Yeah. Every relationship may not be able to be healthy. Now, can That's you have right. a relationship with her? Sure. Hmm. Healthy? I don't, I wouldn't say it would get healthy. Great difference. Mm-hmm. Right. I think the um, notion that we are just going to have to wait for another person, that other person to change um, or to become healthy or, you know, they're going to have to reverse their own patterns after 60 years plus of doing it is a fool's errand. I mean, we really, there's no boundaries do not control another person. They really just control what we are willing to tolerate. And so I think that idea that, no, 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 she gets to be who she is. Like that is on her. That is hers to decide. My only decision here is how much of this am I going to let in? And what am I willing to tolerate? It's, it's, it's the height of adulting to me, this um, sense of creating health in our family dynamics is, this is not for the faint of heart. Some of the funniest, truest, most meaningful things about family are the stories, right? 
Of course, like we all have them, lots of them. But what about the stories and the memories that are equally important that you might just not know about? This is where StoryWorth comes in. It is this really innovative online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories, well, forever. And it doubles as the perfect gift for Mother's Day too, which is right around the corner. So every week, StoryWorth emails your loved one a thought-provoking question of your choice from a huge pool of options. Each prompt asks both earnest and also random things you maybe have never thought about. Stuff like, what's the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? Or what was your favorite school lunch? And then after a year, StoryWorth compiles all those stories, including any photos they upload, into this gorgeous book the whole family can share for, honestly, generations. It is such a meaningful gift that connects you to the people you love most. I've had a StoryWorth going for my ride or die besties, and my mom did one for an entire year that is Well, now, like a family treasure. You'd be surprised what we discovered about each other or the things that we remembered that we had forgotten. So give all the moms in your life a unique and heartfelt gift you'll cherish for years. Story worth. Right now, for a limited time, you'll save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash for the love. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash for the love to save $10 on your first purchase. So I want to end on this. Um, Because this is your work. You've seen, who can even know how many people implement new boundaries and new language into really baked in relationships. So what's the good news here? The hopeful piece is that because people love you and they want to be in a relationship with you, there may be more willingness to do things differently. I'm not saying change because they can still do all the other the things with other people. You just don't want them to do it with you. Um, hmm. There can be some willingness yeah. to present in a different way. You know, so we can be more than one thing. So that lets me know um, that in our relationships with people, other people can be more than one thing. That's good. When, when people say, oh, I don't want to tell my mom, she'll never listen to me. Does your mother have a job? Yes, she listens to someone. That's right. <laughs> she listens to yeah. someone. I wonder how we could get her to listen to you. It's not like mm. she's this being of, I never listened to anyone. Now, if you had no examples of her ever listening, then I could believe that. But there is something about the energy that you all have together that makes her not listen to you. So Mm -hmm. I wonder what we can do to make sure that she hears you in a different way, because she, she hears her boss in a different way. She hears her coworkers who are your age Mm -hmm. in a different way. So it's not that she's unwilling to hear people. She's unwilling to hear you. Mm -hmm. So let's shift you. It's not always, oh my gosh, I have to change this other person. The biggest thing we have to focus on is ourselves. And mm-hmm. that's really hard because the really easy thing is to change the other person. Sure. Oh my gosh. If I could just give you a list that's right. and say, you know, listen longer, do not cut me uh-huh. off. Mm-hmm. Let me um, plan my own, whatever. Uh-huh. Please do not. If I could just give you a list <laughs> that's right. and you focus on all those things, my life would be better. <laughs> so what true. is complicating my yeah. life <laughs> is that right. I actually have to say these things mm-hmm. to you. I have to repeat them because yeah. guess what? You are, again, they're operating in this way in all their relationships. And so what you're saying is with me, with me, with me, this is what I want me. That's good. That's good. And there's possibility on the other side of that. There really is. I've seen that happen in my own life when as a family and and my kids are at the age two where our communication is in some of these spaces because they're young adults. And so we're learning to relate to each other in new ways. And I'm not wanting to treat my 25 year old like I treated him when he was 15. So I'm having to re finagle, you know, some of my language, but it's possible. 
So we've had some conversations where they come to me and I'm like, I want to bite all my fingers off. And they're like, this is what I don't like. And this is what I want you to do differently. And I, 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 I'm still so defensive, but if I can, if I can hold that discomfort, as you said, which I can, because I'm grown, I can hold this. That's not the hardest thing in the world being uncomfortable and sit in what they're saying and respond to them. It, our relationship improves and it's possible. I'm not immovable and neither are they. So um, thank you for that bit of hope. Like until we have tried it, no one should say my mom would never listen or my mom, this could never change until we've tried a healthy, like relational reversal or change or boundary. We don't know what's possible. So, um, okay. Before I ask you the last question that I always ask, will you just tell everybody like where to find your latest book, where to follow you, where to find more about your work. Cause you and I just literally hit the tip of the iceberg here. There's just mountains beneath the surface that you speak on and speak into and toward. Yes. My website is full of resources. I have free worksheets, yeah. everything about my books, events that I'll be a part of. So please visit my website, nadratawab.com. Um, you mentioned that I'm on social media. So that is another space to find me. But, you know, I would say that, you know, in terms of books, the best place to buy books is independent bookstores. But I would say the fastest place to buy a book is Amazon. It is what it is. It it is what it is. So it (laughs) It depends on how quick you need the information. That's right. That's right. Local when you can support um, Barnes and Noble and books. Books a million, all of those places. But of course, you know, Amazon is an option as well. Uh, yeah. That's right. Perfect. And I'll have all those links for everybody. Last question. You answered this last time you were on here. Everybody does. And you can answer this however you want. It can be like a really like sobering answer. It can be like ridiculous. Just okay. whatever you're feeling today. Um, what is saving your life right now? Sleep. Oh, gosh. Tell me yeah. more. Like. I've been more intentional about the quality of sleep and the quantity of sleep. So the temperature in my room, what I wear to sleep so I won't start sweating or toss and turn too much. Um, The type of pillow I'm using, what I do um, right before I go to bed. Uh, Also... um, getting everything out. So not Mm. necessarily journaling, but like creating a little list. Mm. And, and, you know, I want to sleep seven to eight hours most night. I I take my vitamins, have me a light cup of water, not probably not as much as I should drink with vitamins, but because of quality, Mm. I don't want to get up in the middle of the night. (laughs) Good. So, so being intentional about what I do right before I rest and how long I rest has been very important to me these days. Every health expert says this, everyone. And for me, it's the last to go. I just barely can put that on the health list. And yet it's the effect of no sleep on our bodies, our minds, our optimism is so impactful. So I love you. I think you're the first person that's ever said that. And I've asked that question hundreds of times. So, really? yeah, I love that answer. Hey, thank you so much for coming back. You have just been an instructor for me, really, from afar. And not just when you're on this show, but in all the in-between places, as I've navigated a lot of complicated relationships in the last couple of years. And um, I, I thank you for your labor, because it is that. It is that. That is a, it's an emotional and a mental labor to continuously put out um, content like you do because of what comes back to you. I mean, you just have to have firm boundaries or you'll just, they'll just, we'll all just sink you. We'll capsize (laughs) your ship. We'll just all be diving in like, help me. Um, so thank you for what you do. It really does matter. And I am certainly a grateful like listener to everything you have to say. And I'll round up all your links and put them to the people. And if people have not followed you yet, they're about to. So I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. All right, you guys, as mentioned, we just scratched 
the surface. There's so much more here. So over at jenhatmaker.com under the podcast tab, not only will I have this episode and all the show notes, but all the links to Nedra's work, her books, her website, everything she mentioned, um, because I just promise she is a treasure trove of wisdom here. So um, you can head over there and for more, but I just so appreciate her. I'll also put the links to her socials. You are going to thank me later for if you haven't already started following her um i follow her on instagram and so she's just it's just a little video of her beautiful face popping up all the time somehow just giving me what i need that day and so i think she'll do the same for you guys thanks for being here so much more in this series that you are going to love i think you're going to find useful and relatable um which is our favorite kind of series to produce for you and so um miss none by subscribing Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and every episode is going to show right up in your AirPods every single week. You guys, thanks for being here. See you next time.